Greetings, prospective students. I'm Kyle Katarn, Battlemaster of the Jedi Order. I know that Master Shen has taught you much about speech synthesis. With the ever-changing political climate, I'm standing in for a revised lesson. I realized that the previous few videos were kind of rushed, so let's just forget about those chunkies. Now then, what is Floatron? Floatron is a flow-based genitive text-to-speech model. It has certain features such as its ability to host multiple voices in one model. It gives the user control of the speech variants and style, and it can also merge the characteristics of two voices in what is called style transfer. Flow-based text-to-speech models essentially break down their data using different transforms, or reversible mathematical functions to extract certain characteristics of the data. Like most text-to-speech models to date, Flowtron generates audio from a text using what is called the MAL spectrogram. Essentially the audio is split into multiple intervals of equal length, then a mathematical function is applied to get their component frequencies. The frequencies will be displayed on a logarithmic scale to compact the vast amounts of data. MAL spectrograms are the type of data the Flowtron is trained on and it will produce one when given an input text. A separate model will be used to convert the MAL spectrograms into an audio file. Typically, this will be a wiggle or something like hi-fi again. They can be fine-tuned to fit the frequency range of your specific voice. Now, let's take a closer look at how Floatron produces a particular person's voice. Floatron uses what is called the Z-latent space to predict and produce the voice from a given text. When trained, Floatron notes the distribution of the characteristics of the voice, such as pitch, volume, cadence, and tone. In other words, it does not simply rely on means and averages, but also the deviation of the data. When predicting how a voice sounds, it would thereby be able to produce multiple results with varying emotions and emphasis. The latent space is where the model learns to associate certain pieces of data with each other. This allows the audio produced to be much smoother as the missing gaps or holes can be covered by interpolation. Of course, these effects are not entirely eliminated, as you can hear from my voice. To piece it all up together, Flotchen is essentially given two inputs, the speaker ID and the text to generate. During training, the audio file is transformed to a MEL spectrogram, which is then mapped onto latent space. Now then, let us move on to prepping the training data. Prior to training, a set of audio files together with a text file containing the path to each audio file. The transcription of the audio in the speaker ID is prepared. The audio file should be in the mono wave file format, with a sampling frequency of 22,050 Hz. You can refer to Master Shan's previous tutorial for more details. Ensure that your audio files are between 2 to 10 seconds of length and have no long pauses. If there is any static or background, noise, you should clear them using audio processing software. The most commonly used software for such purposes is Audacity. I won't go into much detail here, but you would use the noise reduction under the effects tab. When transcripting the audio file, remember to add in your punctuations. There are different kinds of automated speech recognition software that can help with the transcription to save time. There's a link to a Google Call Lab that helps with such transcription. However, you must manually add in and correct certain words, phrases, and punctuations to make it accurate. Failure to do so will result in terrible alignment, meaning the voice produced will be stuttering or worse and comprehensible. When handling the punctuation, the different symbols can be associated with certain tones and emphasis. As such, the full stops, question marks, and exclamation marks are critical for better representation of the voice. Of course, this will also depend on whether your training data contains sufficient amounts of examples. When you're done transcripting the audios, you can split them into two separate text files, one for training and the other for validation. The number of files used for training should be 10 times that of validation. With the data set ready, you can move them to your Google Drive for use. Moving on, let us access the Google Collab to train the model. Of course, you would need a Google account, a proper internet connection, and a computer. Before starting, set your runtime type to GPU under the following tab. First, you would run the cells under setting things up to download the necessary files for Flowtron. Two prompts will pop up to run the Google Colab and authorize access to your Google Drive. 
When that is done, you can move on to the section titled Training. It was mentioned in the previous tutorial to use the few cells to change your parameters. But a more straightforward way is to access the config.json file. Just simply click the file icon on the right, then the Floatron folder. The file will look something like this. Take note of the parameters highlighted in yellow. These have to do with utilizing the memory space in the GPU RAM. Under the data config section, change the file list paths to where you placed your file list on Google Drive. Under model config, set in speakers to the number of voices you have in your data set. Run these two cells to download the base model and set the name of your model. Typically, you can start the training with about three or four epochs, then continue for a couple more with a lower learning rate. To align your checkpoints to each epoch, simply set items per checkpoint and the number of training files divided by batch size. If you encounter an error where the code is out of memory, restart the runtime, then resume training with a smaller batch size. You can use a tool called TensorBoard to track your training progress. There are two indicators to check if your model is good to go, loss and alignment. Loss is simply a measure of how far your model output is from the desired output. The lower the loss, the better. During training, your training and validation loss will decrease over time. If your validation loss begins to increase while the other is still decreasing, it may mean your model is sufficiently trained. Alignment indicates that the sounds are produced in a proper sequence. A decent alignment will have something like this with a sharper diagonal line. For a forced alignment, you can train your model on an additional epoch. Setting the CTC loss start items to your current iteration. When you've fulfilled these two criteria, you can test out your model. Just simply run the cells under producing audio. The sigma value controls the variance of the voice. A high sigma value will give more emotions. You may sometimes hear some background screeching or stuttering speech. If the voice produced isn't satisfactory, just run the cell until you get an optimal result. If you feel the voice is hitting the roof a little too much, just reduce the sigma value accordingly. Change the number here accordingly to switch between voices. If your words are getting cut off at the start of the end, you can add an extra word and crop it out later. Besides varying the sigma value, changing the punctuation can also vary the voice a bit. Hello there. Hello there. This is the reason why your training data should contain proper notations, as the model output will take such things into consideration. The end of the output will be determined by the use of punctuation. While the differences may be a little subtle in some cases, it gives a better idea of what you want. Think of it like ordering a scotch whiskey instead of simply beer. Try to avoid synthesizing sentences that are too long, as the accuracy will often drop after a certain length. The process of running the cell to synthesize the voiceover and over to get the best results can be quite annoying, so some additional code is provided for you to synthesize a bunch of them first. Just simply dump your text there, then run the next few cells. Basically, the text will be split up into individual sentences, then sequentially produced and written to an audio file in your Google Drive. You can either choose to split them up into individual files, or combine them into one. You can produce multiple iterations of each sentence, so you can choose your best results offline from the downloaded files. I have not really figured out how to utilize the style transform. I will get back to you when I have figured it out. Honestly, there is not much left to go through. Just learn to stay safe and don't use this technology for dangerous games. That's all for today, students. May the force be with you sounds a bit cliche. But don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Master Guitar and signing off.